How's it going everyone? Welcome to Disc Functional Commentary. A type of horror film that I really enjoy watching around Halloween is the haunted house film, but finding a good haunted house movie can be a little bit tricky because for every the haunting that we get, we get at least five times as many the hauntings. So today I'm going to talk about the Amityville Horror franchise, a series of films that is based on an actual location that is supposedly haunted. Now the story goes that Ronnie DeFeo Jr. murdered his entire family while in the house at 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville. During his trial, he claimed that he heard voices while in the house and those voices told him to do it. Sometime later, newly married couple George and Kathy Lutz moved into the house with their children and upon moving in began to experience all kinds of strange occurrences. 28 days later, they were so frightened by what was happening that they fled the house, left all of their possessions behind, and never returned. The house was also famously investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Those names might be familiar to you if you are a fan of The Conjuring films because the characters in those films are based on the real-life paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Lorraine Warren actually has a bit of a famous quote regarding the Amityville house where she said it was the closest to hell that she ever hoped to get. Now, I am not here to argue whether or not the events described by the Lutzes and the Warrens actually happened or if it was all just some elaborate hoax. For the purposes of this channel, all I'm really interested in is are these entertaining films? So I have with me here the Amityville Trilogy box set, another really solid collection of films released by Scream Factory it has the first three Amityville Horror films, and I'm just going to go through each of the films in this collection and just give you my general opinion on each of them. And uh, so why don't we just get started? So the first film in the collection is the original Amityville Horror, and I will admit that I actually really like this movie, but it is by no means a perfect film. It can move a little bit slowly at times, and there are some visual effects in the film that don't really work all that well. One in particular that always leaves me scratching my head a bit, but overall I still find it to be a pretty effective haunted house film. It's one of those movies that despite all of its flaws, and it is a flawed film, make no mistake about it, but despite all of that, it still manages to be entertaining. I think maybe that has something to do with the fact that it is based on an actual location. And so that's always kind of in the back of your mind when you're watching this film, that it's based on an actual place that is supposedly haunted. And it also reeks of that 70s era that it was made in. So yes, the original Amityville Horror, a bit of a guilty pleasure, you might say for me, uh, but I do really enjoy this film. Next up, we have Amityville 2, The Possession, and this is probably my least favorite of the Amityville films that I've seen. It is a prequel that is loosely based on the DeFeo murders, though they've changed the names in this film. Regardless of whether or not you believe the stories told by the Lutzes and the Warrens about the house being haunted and that it's evil, a gateway to hell, any of that, the DeFeo murders are fact. Those happened. That's real. And this movie takes that tragedy and then mixes in a little bit of The Exorcist and the result is Amityville 2, The Possession. I don't really think the direction is effective enough to be scary. And because it's based on actual murders, because these people... I mean, these people really died. Uh, to me, it's, it's a little bit too depressing to be entertaining. So there's also some scenes in here that deal with some, shall we say, taboo subject matter. I don't, it doesn't really bother me, but I guess it's worth mentioning. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a weird movie too. So uh, probably my least favorite of the franchise, at least the ones that I've seen, but it is part of the collection, so... Amityville 2, The Possession. Next up, we have Amityville 3, or Amityville 3D. 
This is another film that really isn't all that scary, but they at least brought back the fun, or at least they did if you were able to watch it in 3D. The Blu-ray does include the 3D version of the film, and I actually mentioned this movie on a previous video that I did where I talked about movies I felt were worth owning a copy of to watch in 3D. This is one of those movies that were made during that era of 3D where they were very gimmicky, you know, where they unapologetically point things at the screen, stuff like that. It was silly, it was campy, it was cheesy, but that was the point. And if you are able to watch this movie in 3D, it can be kind of fun. Not nearly as entertaining if you are only able to watch the 2D version, but the 3D version can be pretty entertaining. So is this Amityville Horror Trilogy box set worth picking up? That depends on you. The Amityville films, I think, are a bit of an acquired taste. I don't really think they are for everyone. I used the term guilty pleasure when I was talking about the first film, but honestly, that term can be applied to just about every other film in the franchise as well. But if you are a fan of haunted house films or 70s era demonic horror films, then the first film in particular will probably appeal to you. As far as the box set, it's nice to have the other two films as well. Uh, but the sequels can be a little bit hit and miss. One thing I will say, the DVD trilogy set that came out years and years ago had a bonus disc that included documentaries done by the History Channel that talked about the actual Amityville house. And that was a really nice companion piece to the entire collection. That is not included here. I'm sure that has something to do with the rights issues that Scream Factory ran into. But the movies themselves look way better than they did on that DVD collection. There are also some made-for-TV and direct-to-video sequels that were not included in this collection as well. Again, more than likely due to some rights issues that Scream Factory ran into. And up until now, those did not exist on Blu-ray. But Vinegar Syndrome is releasing Amityville The Cursed Collection. This will include Amityville 4, the Evil Escapes, Amityville It's About Time, Amityville A New Generation, and Amityville Dollhouse. Once this collection from Vinegar Syndrome is released, all of the Amityville sequels prior to the 2005 remake will have had a Blu-ray release except for one, The Amityville Curse. I have not seen that one, but my understanding is, although it is technically part of the Amityville franchise, it's kind of the oddball of the group. It doesn't really have anything to do with the house or any of the other films. But again, I haven't seen that one. It's just what I've been led to believe based on what I've read. But for whatever reason, that is not going to be included in the Vinegar Syndrome collection. The Vinegar Syndrome collection will also be limited to 4,000 copies. So if it is something that you are at all interested in, you probably want to jump on that and pick up your copy sooner rather than later. They are available for pre-order, and they are coming out at the end of the month. October 29th is when that will be released. Guys, that's going to wrap it up. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you later.